Welcome to the Mind Magic YouTube channel. Here you will find insightful video tutorials to kickstart your tech career. Appraisals and greater career transitions are just around the corner and if you are the one looking for a brighter career and don't know just where to start, then worry not. Mind Magic is here for the rescue. Having said that, today we bring you the ReactJS interview questions and answers to help you crack that next interview and land in your dream company. Beyond the basics, we want to set you up for interview success. So, we take our list of questions seriously. We analyze real job descriptions from top sites like Indeed, Nokri, LinkedIn, and Glassdoor. But that's not all. We went a step further, surveyed and talked directly with experienced developers, top recruiters, and hiring managers. This insider knowledge means our questions and answers are laser focused on what you'll actually face in your interview. We categorized freshers, intermediate, and experienced levels. Each level will have a theory and scenario-based tricky tech questions where you will be involved and imagined in a real-time scenario. With thorough preparation and these top 30 interview questions backing you up, you're standing well beyond halfway through your quest to ace that interview. So grab your notepad and get ready to transform yourself into a ReactJS interview rock star. That said, if these are the type of videos you'd like to watch, then hit that like and subscribe buttons and the bell icon to get notified. Now, without further delay, let's get started with the top 30 ReactJS interview questions and answers. Now, let's begin with the beginner level interview questions and the category will be general and most frequently asked theory-based interview questions. So, the first question, what is ReactJS? So, the answer. ReactJS is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces, primarily developed by Facebook. It allows developers to create reusable UI components and efficiently update and render them using some virtual DOMs. Now, the second question. What are the main features of React? Now, the answer for this question is as follows. Some key features of React include virtual DOM optimized performance, component-based architecture, one-way data binding, JSX syntax, and lastly, React hooks for state and side effects. Now, let's proceed further. We have the third question. What is JSX and why is it used in React? Now, the answer for this question. JSX stands for JavaScript XML and it is a syntax extension for JavaScript that allows writing HTML like a code inside JavaScript. React uses JSX to describe what the UI should look like. Now proceeding further, we have the fourth question. What is the difference between a functional component and a class component? The answer for this question, functional component. A simple JavaScript function that takes props and returns JSX. Now the class component. A JavaScript class that extends React component has render function or render method and can maintain a state. Now the fifth question. What are props in React? Now the answer for this question. Props or short for properties are read-only inputs passed in the components to make them dynamic. Now Let's move to the next category, which is scenario-based questions in the beginner level. Now, the sixth question. How would you create a button component that changes color when clicked? Now, the answer for this question. So, use useState to manage the color and update it on a button click. Now, I'll be displaying a code segment and that code segment will help you understand how exactly it is done in real time. So this is the code snippet. So let me walk you through this. We use the use state hook to maintain the button's color. Initially, the color is set to blue according to the code. And when the button is clicked, the on click event updates the color state to red color. If it was blue or back to blue, if it was red. Now the style property dynamically changes the button's background color based on the current state. So this is what the code does. Now proceeding further, we have the seventh question. The seventh question is about create a component that accepts a username as a prop and displays as a greeting. Again, this is also a simple code segment 
which can be explained as follows. So, we create a functional component that accepts a username prop. The component renders a greeting message using the username prop value. The props are passed from the parent component to this component. Now, the flow of execution. When this component is used in another component, a username is passed as a prop. The component displays hello, username which is completely customizable, dynamically and no prop is provided. Nothing is displayed after hello. So this is how the code snippet works. Proceeding further, we have the eighth question in the list. What will be the output for the following code? So these are also some of the types of questions that you may want to focus on. Most of the interviews come up with a code snippet and you have to explain the function or the flow of that particular code. In our case, we have this particular code snippet. And let me help you understand what exactly is the code flow. The component initializes account state with zero. Clicking the button updates count by one using setCount function or setCount method. The updated count value is displayed inside the button. So the flow of execution is as follows. Initially, the button shows number zero and when clicked, the setCount function counts plus one and updates the count. The component re-renders and the updated count has been displayed. Now, let's proceed with the ninth question in the list. You create a simple list component. How would you do it using the map function? Now, here is our answer. Now, the answer is the component receives an items array as a prop. It uses map function or map method to iterate over the array and generate a list of elements. Each element has a key prop to ensure React efficiently updates the list. Now, the flow of execution. Suppose the component receives an example array which includes the following fruit names apple, banana, orange. Map method or map function loops through each item and returns an element. The list is displayed dynamically. Right? Now, let's proceed with the 10th question in the list. How can you conditionally render a component in React? So, the answer for this question is a simple ternary operator. We use a ternary operator or logical and to conditionally render components. If is logged is true and dashboard component is shown, otherwise the login component is displayed according to the code. So the flow of execution is is logged is checked if true dashboard is rendered or login is rendered. Now let's proceed into the next category of questions which cover the intermediate level of questions. Now in that, the first step or the first part is generally or most frequently asked questions. So the first one in it and the count will be 11. Is the difference between a state and a props? So the answer is state is a mutable and managed within a component while props are immutable and passed from parent component. Now the 12th question. How does React's virtual DOM work? The answer, the React's virtual DOM is a lightweight copy of an actual DOM. React updates it first, calculates the difference, which is diffing algorithm, and then updates the real DOM efficiently. Proceeding further, we have the 13th question. What are React hooks? Name some commonly used hooks in React. Hooks allow function components to manage state and side effects. The most common hooks used in React are use state which manages component state use effect which handles side effects use context accesses global state and lastly the use ref which manages references to the dom elements proceeding further we have the 14th question what is the context api in react the answer for this question is as follows it provides a way to share a state across components without passing props manually now we have the 15th question in the list. What is React Router? The answer for this question is as follows. React Router is a library used to handle navigation in React application. Now proceeding further, we have the next category of questions in level 2, which is intermediate level. And the category is scenario-based questions, where you will be put in some imaginary role, which belongs to a real-time event or situation. Now that counts for 16th question. How could you pass data from child component to a parent component? The answer, 
pass a function from the parent to the child and call it with the data. Now you can see the code segment here and let me explain how that works. The parent component defines a function set data. The function is passed as a prop to the child component. The child component calls this function with a value when the button is clicked. Now the flow of execution, the parent component passes set data to child via send data prop. When the button in child is clicked, it calls send data, which is a text message, hello from child, and the parent component updates the data and displays it. Now, let's proceed with the 17th question, which states, how do you fetch API data in a React component? The answer is as follows. Use use effect to fetch data. Now, let me explain how this works. We use use effect to fetch data from an API fetch method or fetch function makes a request and set data updates the component with the response. Now let me explain the flow of execution. The use effect runs when the component mounts. The API calls is made and waits for a response. When data is received, set data updates the component. Now proceeding further, we have the 18th question. Let's say you need to prevent unnecessary re-renders of a component. How? Can you do it? Now the answer for this question is as follows. We use React Memo for functional components and should component update for class components. Now let me take you to the 19th question. So here is as follows. How do you handle form submission in React? Now the answer for this question is as follows. Here you can see a quick small snippet of a code segment and let me explain you how this exactly works. So a controlled input field is used with useState. On form submission, the entered value is displayed. Now let me take you through the flow of execution. The user types in the input field. The setName updates the state on every keystroke and third one will be clicking the submit button which triggers handle submit function or method preventing the default refresh. And lastly, the entered name is displayed in the alert. Now let's proceed to the 28th question in the list. What is lazy loading in React? Now the answer for this question is, it allows components to be loaded only when needed using a function which is called as react.lazy function or method and suspense. Now we are moving to the third level which is advanced level and in that the first category is general or most frequently asked questions. Let's go through them. The first one, which is the 21st one, is what is reconciliation in React? The answer to this question is as follows. Reconciliation is a process that React uses to update the DOM efficiently by comparing the virtual DOM with the real DOM. Now, let's go ahead with the 22nd question in the list. What are higher order components or HOCs? The answer for this question, a pattern where a function takes a component and returns a new enhanced component is called as HOCs. Now the 23rd one in the list. What is the significance of use callback and use memo? The answer, use callback memorizes functions while use memo memorizes the values. Now the 24th question in the list. How does server-side rendering or SSR work in React? The answer, SSR renders components on the server and sends the HTML to the client. 25th question in the list, what is React Fiber? The answer, React Fiber is the new reconciliation algorithm in React that improves performance. Now, let's move to the next category of questions where you will be put in a scenario with a real-time situation or a replica of a real-time situation. Now in that, the first question or the 26th question in the list is as follows. You need to optimize a slow rendering component. How would you do it? The answer is as follows. Use react.memo or use memo and avoid unnecessary state updates. Now the 27th in the list. How do you handle authentication in React? The answer, use JWT tokens stored in local storage 
and use context providers. Now the next one is a code snippet. How would you handle a memory leak in React component? The answer, you can see a code snippet on the screen, but yet let me explain you how this code snippet works. We will be using the use effect for cleanup and to remove event listeners or intervals. Now let's understand the flow of execution for this particular code snippet. When the component mounts, set interval starts running. When the component unmounts, the cleanup function runs, stopping a set interval function which was previously running. And this prevents memory leaks by ensuring the interval is cleared. Now the 29th question in the list. How can you implement infinite scrolling in React? The answer is as follows. Use an intersection observer or listener for scroll events. This should help you. Now, the 30th and the last question in React.js and API questions and answers is as follows. How do you debug performance issues in a React application? The answer is as follows. Use React developer tools, provider API, and use unnecessary renders. And that calls for the end of the session on the top 30 React.js interview questions and answers. Should you have any queries regarding any of the topics covered in this session, or if you require the resources that we used in the session, like the list of questions and answers, code snippets, or the PowerPoint presentation, or apart from these questions, if you're looking for some extra questions, then please do let us know in the comment sections below, and our team of experts will be happy to assist you at the earliest. Until next time, thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more from MindMagics. Thank <laughs> you.